We'll start, of course, by installing MongoDB, and we're going to do it on both the Mac and the Windows computer. Now, the easiest way to install MongoDB on the Mac is with Homebrew, and you can do this by running brew install MongoDB. Now, here I get an error. This is because I'm not currently using the primary user account on this computer, and brew is set up to work with the primary user account. However, I do already have Homebrew installed, and I did install it via MongoDB. Interestingly, if I did have write access to the brew folders, I would still get an error because I already have the latest version of MongoDB installed, and it's going to recognize that and not go ahead and install it over that. So that's really all you need to do to install MongoDB. But maybe you don't want to use Homebrew. That's fine. Let's close this and head over to mongodb.org. This is the official MongoDB website. And right here, you can see we have downloads. So I'll go ahead and click that. And then here we have a list of downloads depending on our operating system. Now, MongoDB really does need 64 bits to run. So if you're running the 32-bit operating system, check out the note that they have down here about some of the limits that you'll have if you are using a 32-bit server. However, I'm running 64 bits here, so I can choose OS 10 64-bit, and I will go ahead and choose to download that. Now, this is a rather hefty download. So while that downloads, we're going to head over here to the terminal and do a bit of setup work for MongoDB. See, when we install MongoDB via Homebrew, it sets up a directory for all of our MongoDB database files to be stored in. However, when we download it this way, we're just going to get a bunch of binary files that are the different tools of MongoDB. So we need to set up that folder for storing MongoDB databases ourselves. And the default place that MongoDB looks is root slash data slash db. So right now I'm going to say make directory and I'll say dash p so that we make parent folders as well. And we want to make slash data slash db. And of course that's permission to be denied. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as the sudo user. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to change the owner of that user and we want to pass it the ID of our current user. So that's going to be ID dash u. We put those in back ticks so that we run the ID dash u can command. As you can see, if I just run ID dash u, I get 502, which is the ID for this user account. So then I can do sudo change owner. I could, let me just put in 502 instead of interpolating the command 502 and then slash data slash db. So that now has changed ownership. And I'm now just going to pause the video until this download finishes, which shouldn't take very long at all. So there we go. That's finished downloading. So I can close Chrome. Let me double click this to unzip it. And in here, you're going to find we have, uh, besides some readmes and licenses, we have this bin folder. And inside this bin folder are all of the binaries that we need for MongoDB. So what you want to do is move these to somewhere that is going to be within your terminal path. I'm not going to be moving these because I'm going to be using my homebrew installation throughout this course. However, if you are going to be using these binaries, just move them to somewhere that is inside of your path. So now, whether you've installed it via the downloaded binaries and put them somewhere in your path, or whether you installed it via homebrew, we can now go ahead and start the server. So we do this by running mongod. Now, in my case, that's not going to work because, as I said before, I'm not the primary user of this homebrew installation. However, I can get this to work by running sudo mongod, and as you can see now, our server is running. And you may think this just looks like a bunch of unintelligible stuff printed out here, but notice that we don't have our new prompt at the bottom. So that means, as you can see here, we are waiting for connections. And if we were to go to a new tab here and run Mongo, you can see that we've connected to our shell. But we're going to be looking at all of that in our next screencast. First, though, we have to go and install MongoDB on Windows. Installing MongoDB on Windows is pretty similar to installing it manually on the Mac. Back at mongodb.org, I'll click the Downloads button. And then, since this is a 32-bit installation of Windows, I'm going to choose the Windows 32-bit download. Now, since I already have MongoDB installed on this computer, I'm going to exit Chrome and open up my C drive here. As you can see, I've got a MongoDB folder here on my C drive. And inside this, I have that bin folder. This is just what you get when you unzip the download that I just started to download there. Inside of this bin folder are all of our executables. Now, of course, you can put them wherever you want to name this folder, whatever you want. But I'm just going to leave it like this because this is the suggested way to do it from the MongoDB documentation. One thing we do have to do is create a new folder here called data. And then inside of this, we want to create a new folder called db. And this is where that 
data for our MongoDB instance is going to stay. So now if I come back to the bin folder here and I double click the MongoD executable here, we should have a terminal pop up here. Oh, I'll have to choose to run this. And now we have a terminal pop up and you can see that the MongoDB server has started up here. Now I can just minimize this and leave it there. You could also set Windows up so that MongoD will run as a service and you could have it run automatically whenever you log in so that you don't have to have this extra terminal window floating around all the time. So now that we have MongoDB up and running on both our Mac and Windows computers, it's time to take a quick look at some of the tools we installed along with the MongoDB server.